So antibody drug conjugates, probably the greatest new discovery in cancer treatment, um, targeted chemotherapy. Uh, in a sense, it's like a dating service for the chemo drug and the tumor cell. Okay. So, so let me so, just be clear to those of you who are on the call right now, we're now switching from anything specific to colorectal cancer, although Alex might reference it. And this is, this is beneficial to all cancer patients, what's about to be shared here. Yeah. So basically, this is a tumor cell here. And this is an ADC, an antibody drug conjugate. So the, the antibody drug conjugate is this uh, Y shape. That's kind of the universal um, science-based sign for uh, antibodies. Um, that's, you know, kind of what scientists use. Um, and then what happens is you have this antibody. This antibody is designed for a certain cell surface receptor. Now, basically what that means is this is something on the outside of the cell that acts as a docking station for different proteins or different molecules that want to enter the cell. They have to go through these receptors. Or um, it targets an antigen. An antigen is just basically something on the outside of the cell that tells the immune system and the rest of the body what type of cell it is. It's kind of like a street address. But the important consideration is both of these are on the outside of tumor cells. Um, and so in this particular case, you have the antibody drug. The conjugate is the linker that links the two. And then the payload is the chemotherapy drug. And so you have like a couple of molecules of this chemotherapy drug attached to the antibody. They inject the combination into you. The antibody seeks out the cell surface receptor. In this particular case, it's right here. And let's say it's a HER2. So let's call this a HER2. So the antibody drug conjugate sees any cell with a HER2 receptor on it, attaches to it. The cell takes it inside, tries to break it down, and in the process of breaking it down, releases a chemo drug, which kills it from the inside out. And that basically is like a Trojan horse effect. So these drugs will work in any type of cancer that has that cell surface receptor or antigen. Um, they will go anywhere in the body. They go in the central nervous system. They can cross the blood brain barrier. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what the genetics of the tumor are whether it's got a treatment resistant mutations or not, it only matters that they have that self surface receptor or not. Okay. So my next website here. So right now, because these things are so hot and they work so well and they work in just about any type of cancer. So in other words, when a drug company makes an antibody drug, drug conjugate against a certain cell surface receptor, they don't just go for approval in one type of cancer. They can go for approval across many different types of cancers, regardless, as long as that cancer has that cell surface receptor. And so mm -hmm. this is what we call agnostic approvals. So instead of seeing a drug for breast cancer or a drug approved for this or a drug approved for that, we're going to start seeing these antibody drug conjugates being approved for, you know, just any cancer that has that molecular feature. So this is the beauty of it. Right now, I believe there's about 25, maybe 20 different um, antibody drug conjugates that have been FDA approved. Um, but what's important is there's probably about 8,000 right now in development. So every company that's doing anything pharmacy oncology related is now making ADCs. I think most of the companies have dropped what they're doing and they're saying, hey, ADCs, that's it. So this is a great tool because um, what it does is it tells you, um, you know, what the drug makers are doing and how to access the drugs and what clinical trials have those drugs. So let's say we're looking for HER2, or let, let's say TROPE2. TROPE2 is a receptor on the outside of certain tumor cells. So we'll type in the receptor, we'll press enter, and right away, it gives us all of the different companies making drugs, antibody drug conjugates that target the TROPE2 receptor. So if you are a cancer patient and you have TROPE2 expression on your tumor cells, then any one of these drugs should, should potentially be effective for you. So right here, the first one, Sacatuzumab Govetican, approved. We've got a few patients on it. It was initially used in breast cancer. We've got patients with endometrial cancer. We've got patients with prostate cancer. We've got all kinds of patients on this drug right now. Uh, you can see right here, um, this company is making them for non-small cell lung cancers, still targeting it. Um, and the antibody name is Sacatuzumab. Um, and then this is a better version of Sacatuzumab Govetican. Uh, it's called Datopotamab. It's actually going to be approved very quickly because it works better than Sacatuzumab Govetican. It's 10 times more effective. Wow. And then, of course, you've got all of these other uh, ones. All of these are targeting um, trope 2. So it doesn't matter what type of cancer. Now, 
if you want to find out about this, um, you just look at this. You say, okay, it's approved. That means I can get it. Um, if you want to find out, you know, is it in clinical trial? Great. Can I get in the clinical trial and get the drug? The important yeah. thing is look at this. So one, two, three, four, how many pages? 14 pages of one, two, three. For that one molecular feature. Know, like, yeah. 14 pages of for this one molecular feature. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. So 10 drugs a page, 14 pages. So that's like almost 140. And the last page only had three drugs. So that's like 100, 130, 37 drugs <laughs> being made just to target the trope 2 receptor. When we do our RNA expression test, we will see probably um, five or six different overexpressed um, targetable drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's just today. Yeah, so not just trope two, but so, multitudes. The RNA yes, new, new targets are coming out every day. So yeah. um, we could go back to home. Uh, we could say, okay, let's say I'm looking for CDH6. Let's look at CDH6. It's a brand new one. CDH6. Okay. It's a new one I just discovered a little while ago. All right. uh, let's see how many drugs are for that. Um, so there's two pages, a brand new drug. Um, Ralodot. That to tag Durex T can. Sure. Um, interesting name. Still um, in the investigative phase, those yeah, ones. Yeah. So. Um, actually, I saw the I saw the clinical trial data on this. It's pretty good. Um, oh, the cool. clinical trial is working really well. Renal cell carcinoma. That's good. Um, wow. The, yeah. What I love about these the ovarian. The but it, it just makes me feel so happy, frankly, when I see lists like this and, and things like the renal cell and pancreatic cancer are on the list because those can be so yeah. easy to treat. It just makes me so happy to hear that there are new yeah. targeted. And, and, and of course, the big, you know, the big baby is her too. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. 132. 132. Um, you know, most of the pages have 10, 10 drugs. So wow. the yeah. Talk about an overcrowded market. Yeah. I mean, we're talking what, what, 100, 132 times 10 is yeah. uh, 1,320 plus, you know, it's like three or four on the last page. So, you know, well over like, you know, 1,300 drugs. Yeah. For that one particular. For one per two marker. <laughs> so what I think, I think what... <laughs> you know, folks watching from home need to understand is that Alex, as he said, there's about 8,000 of these in development right now. It's um, probably changing every day. We yeah, see new ones come out literally every week. And these drugs, what's important is that these drugs are being given agnostic approval uh, because of the mechanism of how they work. It doesn't matter with all due respect, uh, uh, that's a, a generalization I know, but um, where your cancer is, is less important in relation to whether this is the right drug for you than if you have a particular molecular feature driving your cancer that one of these drugs targets. The other thing that Alex mentioned earlier that I really like to mention is that while there is a chemotherapy drug involved in all antibody drug conjugates, it's a couple of molecules that are delivered directly into the cancer cells. So you saw in that initial picture, the, the, uh, it's got very low cytotoxicity, meaning it doesn't go to the neighboring healthy cells and do damage. Um, so far more effective. It's like targeted therapy and so many of these. And this is just something that's really kind of happened in the last year. So yeah. when you see how many of those pharmaceutical companies are not stupid, they are yeah. not going to put money into something that they do not believe at, at uh, is going to benefit them in terms of their bottom line. So you have to appreciate that they, the fact that there are thousands of these in development tells us n not only are these exceptionally beneficial, um, but uh, companies understand it and doctors will soon be prescribing these almost, well, uh, soon, of course, every country is a little different, but if we have our way, they'll be prescribing them as first line soon, which will require some good thorough genetic testing up front or the 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 RNA and the HER2. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, if I could say one more thing on this. Um, so there's three different technologies involved here with ADCs, um, and they're all separate industries. Number one is the technology about the antibodies. So antibodies, um, 
have now been perfected. They can make antibodies. They can make small molecules that mimic the antibodies. We've really jumped ahead in that field. In fact, you can have a custom designed antibody. Now you go to any university in the world, go to the molecular biology, biochemistry department and say, I want an antibody for uh, this cell surface receptor. And you know, couple a month or two later, you'll get this antibody sent to you and it will be about $1,500 Canadian. Mm -hmm. It's that cheap and they'll do it for anything. Um, super cheap, super easy to do. Um, then the second thing is the chemotherapy technology. So a lot of the chemotherapy drugs are using here were chemotherapy drugs that are very, very toxic. In other words, when they were creating chemotherapy drugs, they would inject these chemotherapy drugs into people or animals or, you know, typically animals. And they would find that, wow, the drug works really get really good against a cancer cell, but it's just too toxic. It kills normal, healthy cells too, it kills everything. So with the antibody drug conjugate, the drug does not get released until it's attached to the tumor cell and it only gets released to the tumor cell, does not go up throughout the body. So that allows them to use these chemotherapy drugs that typically had been deemed too toxic and were put on a shelf and not used. Um, and the third technology is the linker. The linker is what gets broken down to release the drug. So in the first line of treatments, when they're first coming up with these technologies, um, the linkers um, sometimes didn't always work. Sometimes the linker would release the drug into the blood. So there was certain proteins that would break down the linker in the blood. Now they're starting to solve that and the linker technology is getting really good. So the, so the um, uh, drug is not released by anything else in the body, only when it's attached to the tumor. And additionally, they're, they're starting to design these drugs with what they call bystander effect. And what bystander effect is, is they will target the, the tumor cell um, that has the receptor, they'll kill that, and then the chemo drug will spread sideways and kill the neighboring tumor cells that may not have that receptor. And because of that, they can use these drugs in, in um, tumors that don't have, uh, that have low levels of the receptor. So for example, with HER2, the drug TDXD or NHER2 has bystander effect and it binds the HER2 receptor. However, not all tumor cells have the HER2 receptor. So um, the way you determine how many cells in the, in the tumor have, a, have the HER2 receptor is um, the basic test is IHC, immunohistochemistry. And uh, what they basically do is they take a sample of the tumor and they add a stain that, that uh, binds to the HER2 receptor. And so any cell that you know, lights up with the stain or absorbs the stain and changes color has that. And so then they count the amount of cells and they say, well, you know, uh, you have this many tumor cells within the tumor, so your score is one plus. Um, or you have this, you have much more tumor cells that stain positive for HER2, so your score is two plus. Or, you know, a lot of your tumor cells stain for HER2 receptor, so you have a three plus score. So normally a one plus is considered negative and a two plus is considered equivocal or in between, and a three plus is considered positive. Um, because these drugs, these ADCs are being designed with bystander effect, it means that they can work in a HER2 2 plus. So even if you don't have complete expression of that HER2 receptor in all your tumor cells, the drug is still going to be effective. So we can now use um, this drug in patients that have um, uh, HER2 2 plus. Right. People who would have been told before that they they didn't meet that three plus criteria. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And we've seen exactly. we've definitely seen uh, patients with the two plus benefit greatly from this targeted yes. therapy. For yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and again, it's. We, yeah. Go ahead, please. Go one more slide here. This is sure. really cool. So ADCs, of course, that that's the big the big piece is. Uh, we will keep checking our patients' genetic test results um, as these new ADCs are released to see if any have been released that would be beneficial for them. Um, but for anybody at home who's had testing done elsewhere, <laughs> visit that ADC site. I, I just want to share one more slide real quickly. Okay. This is um, this is the, one of the first studies they did on, on uh, pan cancer. In other words, it was many different cancer types. This is a drug, TDXD, that I was just talking about that has the bystander effect. Okay. Um, I'm just going to share that right now. So this is a different cancers. 
This is the confirmed overall response rate. So how many patients out of 100 responded to the drug? Now, these are in late stage, heavily pretreated cases that didn't have any other options, all of these people. Um, and so you can see they mm -hmm. based it, if you have a three plus um, HER2, that means you have a lot of cells, you obviously get a much better response to the drug. So, but look at this, an endometrial cancer, they're late stage, that's no options for. Um, these patients have literally months to live. 84.6% of the patients responded to the drug. Those, those with the Even pancreatic cancer, which literally at late stage has nothing for it. You know, um, they only had a few pancreatic cancer patients, but you know, even the, the two plus 5.3% of the patients got a response, which is incredible. Um, now the reason it didn't work so well in pancreatic cancer, um, is because pancreatic cancers, um, have a fibrous matrix around the tumors and that goes with the metastasis. And so that prevents, you know, the, the, the drug from finding the tumor and binding onto the cell surface receptor. Um, and that's part of the problem with pancreatic cancers. There are some, some treatment options that they're looking into to solve this problem. But, um, overall, I think the ADCs are going to be the way to go. And what they're probably going to end up doing is they're going to find something that is found in that fibrous matrix of the tumor and then create an antibody drug conjugate to target that. So it targets the fibrous matrix around the tumor, gets rid of that, and then they could use normal drugs or just target, uh, use a different ADC to target the tumor. That's What's really important, I really want to show here, is the reduction in tumor size. So if you look down here, each one of these little lines with the dot is a different patient. Okay, this is the endometrial. So as you can see, look at all these patients. A couple patients didn't get a response, their tumors grew. But in the vast majority, look at they all got responses and all these different cancers. Um, you know, hardly any of the patients didn't get a response. I mean, look at bladder cancers. You know, like literally two patients didn't respond to the drug and all these other ones did. Mm -hmm. And this is the reduction in tumor size, 100% in, in some cases. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. We just haven't seen a drug work like this ever before. No. So what's important, again... It this is just one of these types of drugs for one which of, what is it what, what was it uh 1300 yeah <laughs> so they target her too right and the, and again her too is just one just one marker right of of 20 potential twenty thousand potential or however many different yeah so our current rna panel looks at twenty one thousand genes um that's how you determine you know which which antibody drug conjugates are best is through rna expression tumor RNA expression testing. Our panel looks at 21, just under 21,000 genes. Um, how many How many are cell surface receptors? Hard to know. Um, it, it really is. Um, I suspect there's going to be thousands. Yeah, it looks like it. That's what seems to be the development. Yeah, yeah. Once you look at the antigens and so on. Yeah. So exciting times for sure. Um, but what I, what, I, what I see more likely happening is custom ADCs. So they take your tumor, they look at the antibody, or they look at the different receptors and antigens on the outside of the tumor. They say, oh, you have a high amount of this particular protein on your tumor. Uh, it's unique to you. Nobody else has a high amount of this protein on your tumor, but you do, uh, the cell surface protein antigen. So in three weeks, we'll have the antibody, uh, we'll add the linker, and then we'll use this chemo drug, and you'll have your own custom antibody. Mm -hmm antibody drug conjugate just for you that's what i see happening in the yeah, future that makes good sense to me yeah yeah all right well thank you alex that's quite yeah. something there yeah we're very excited about this new type of therapy and you know there's always new stuff coming what i like is that it's it's a lot shorter period of time now from the time a new treatment is developed to the time that patients can access it um obviously that's a big part of what Alex and his team are about is shortening that gap for sure. But uh, that's the most exciting thing for you folks watching from home is that we're not talking about like science fiction. We're not talking about something that might be available in 10 years. We're talking about something that is right now mm -hmm. and and in gangbusters in terms of development for new options. So.